return to the natural order. When you change the intention, you get a very different pattern. You see an effect when uh, the water is treated, but you don't see an effect directly when this intention is directed toward the, toward the tumor cells. Now, we can discuss this, and I'm not really sure. This is a real anomaly for me. This is not at all what I expected, so this can't be an experimenter effect. And this effect was seen with, with the loving intention, and it was seen with the dematerialization intention, but it was not uh, obtained with the return to the natural order. So this uh, phenomena is, at this point, completely unexplained. I, I really don't have an explanation other than to say that certain intentions resonate with water in a different way and can be stored in a different way and therefore have an, ad and can be read by the biological system in a different way. Uh, so this is, um, you know, preliminary experiments, which is the whole purpose of being in this kind of society. Um, this is unpublished data, but uh, there clearly is a, an effect on the different intentions. So that is my conclusion that uh, the healing effects um, can be direct or they can be indirect, that water seems to mediate the effects. Water, in this case, is storing the information and the, uh, the, the treatment time is over 15 minutes, as I said, but the biological system is reading the information stored in the water over a 24-hour period because the growth period was over a 24-hour period. Um, it seems that uh, some uh, intentions are quite effective and some are not effective. There's a difference between direct and indirect. And uh, it seems that uh, there's a lot of um, unknown uh, phenomena, anomalous phenomena occurring. Okay, since I do have a couple of more minutes, I want to address the possible mechanisms how this phenomena could be occurring. Now, water memory is actually, it's controversial, but there is some scientific literature that water can remember heat exposure, that's thermal memory, and that's known that the vibration and rotation modes of the water molecules can store heat energy. Ultraviolet energy can be stored in electron transitions of the water molecule. There's even a phenomenon called hydration memory, which is in the scientific literature, published in peer-reviewed uh, journals. In this case, the, um, it's been done with enzymes and particular uh, chemicals that are added to the water that affects the enzymes, the, the resultant effect on the uh, enzyme activity it has more to do with the ability of the chemical to structure the water than it does with the chemical structure of the additive, which is an interesting phenomenon. So um, in addition to the traditional mechanisms, we have non-traditional mechanisms. And we've talked, actually heard a little bit about the hydrogen bond uh, this afternoon, uh, which, is, which allows water to form clusters. And this is one possible mechanism, except for the fact that these clusters kind of dis uh, appear and disappear and flicker on and off. So if the information was to be stored in the structure, as soon as the structure dissipates, you would think the information would just dissipate along with it. So I'm not sure that's the best of explanations. Uh, there are various uh, other explanations. I think the most likely explanation is the one that was proposed by Del Giudice a couple of years ago, where he described quantum domains in water. So in addition to having these structural uh, clusters of water, we have quantum domains, which are described in terms of quantum fields within the quantum domains and coherent oscillations between the coherent domains. So it seems to me that that's one likely possible explanation because of the uh, quantum nature of consciousness. So I'm throwing that out as possible mechanisms. There are other mechanisms involved, uh, these superconducting filaments and solitons. And for all the physicists in the audience, obviously, uh, there are a lot of theories out, but very little bit of correlation between the theory and the experimental data. Since I have 30 seconds left, I want to thank you <laughs> for your time. That's it. OK, so we really have five minutes.
Um, has anyone uh, looked at the, uh, ex investigated the, um, uh, the, the other logical possibility uh, that uh, distant intentional effects on uh, tumor growth could be in the negative direction in, to increase the tumor growth rate? Yes, uh, from other experiments that I've done um, with, with the same healer, where we were more focusing on direct experiments. These were not actually done at a distance. They, they were done in, in the lab, and the healer just laid his hands on the water. Uh, but depending on his intention, yes, he could inhibit the growth. Um, if he visualized the endpoint was, was you know, uh, fewer cells in the Petri dish, the actual growth was, uh, I mean, more, I said the opposite, more cells. He could actually stimulate the growth as well as inhibit the growth depending on the intention. Uh, Glenn, two yep. quick questions. Um, could you comment on the level of purity of the water, A, and B? The second question is, would hydration memory be most like a homeopathic dilution? Well, uh, the first question is easy. Uh, it was uh, deionized water, standard laboratory water that we use to measure, uh, to use to make tissue culture medium. Um, hydration memory uh, uh, and homeopathy, hmm, I have to think about that. Um, it, uh, hmm. Yeah, I hadn't actually thought about that, but that's a very feasible explanation because it's the presence of a chemical which actually structures the water and then has a resultant effect. Uh, so yes, that, that's a very feasible mechanism for homeopathy. A uh, question. Uh, if I understand correctly, you've shown that intention affects the structure of water. Right. And you've also shown in other experiments that intention applied to water or to a subject affects uh, uh, healing or produces healing. An effect on the biological system, right. correct. But the, so the question still remains, is it the structure in the water that produces the healing uh, when that water is, is, is given to the, uh, what needs to be healed? Or is it just a direct effect of that intention and the water could have been uh, applying the intention to that lamp instead, and it still would have healed that person. So it seems to me the way to really prove that it's the water structure that has done the healing and not just the intention directly would be to show, for example, that the degradation of the structure in the water correlates in time with the degradation of the healing power or something like that. Has anything like that been done? The uh, degrad well, um, we don't know how long it lasts uh, in compared to the wa uh, electromagnetic exposure, which we know lasts about 20 minutes to a half an hour. Um, have I looked at that much? The um, no, I, I I do not know how how long it lasts, and I have not made any such correlations. And uh, no, nobody has done those kind of experiments. And the few scientists who do these kind of experiments usually are first looking at the phenomenological uh, aspects of it. You know, the phenomena is, you know, that water seems to be able to carry the information of intent. And uh, once you have that phenomena, then you can go into much more details. The first attempt at even looking at the mechanism is to say, is there a structural change in the water that correlates with the storage of the information? So that's the first attempt. And obviously, there's a lot more experiments to do. Glenn, would you um, share with us the difference between the sham healing of the water as well as the cells? I didn't see that clearly represented in your slides. Maybe I missed something. Uh, okay. The, the, um, experiment, the tumor cells were split into two uh, uh, batches of cells, six Petri dishes and six Petri dishes. And I had a, a second person independently bring the uh, dishes to the healer in one room and the the non-healer in another room. And then they, for, during the 15-minute period, you know, the healer did his intention thing. And the non-healer, well, actually, I didn't mention that, but in some experiments, I actually had the non-healer read a book so that but they what were the results of the sham healing? That was my question. Oh, I understood oh, the method. Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, the, well, oh, the data was presented as the, uh, as, as the, uh, per, the percent inhibition and, um, Oh, I see, relative to the control. Yeah, I'm uh, talking about the sham healer compared to the uh, Leonard Laskow. Right. Uh, the magnitude of the effect uh, was uh, taken into account, and I actually did the difference between the healing in 